Southern. And I was going to do some track work today, and I thought maybe you'd like to watch me do it. I'll try to explain what's happening as I as I go. This is the uh, model of uh, the inner bay yard on my HO scale Burlington Northern. And I've been working on the car repair shed uh, trackage, which, uh, as you can see, I've got the car repair shed out over the main line. I'm going to just stick the phone in the uh, tripod and uh, take you through the basic steps of track laying. I think I should turn the camera around, get a better picture, just a second. Let's do this right. Flip the camera around. See, so here's the tripod. I got two lights here. There's the layout again. And I hope you enjoy this. I'm just going to do what I was going to do anyway, but uh, hopefully you get a kick out of it if, if you haven't done too much track laying. So let's see. Can you see what we're doing? So I have a ladder, a ladder of switches, a, a series of switches here that I've just been preparing to put in. These are all loose right now, but they're in position. And I've marked down on the cork. I've marked where what what the alignment is, so I'm pretty secure about where these turnouts are supposed to be located. Uh, but my last piece of track that I needed to put in here is the curve that goes from here to this track. And you can see I have three tracks in the car repair shed. Why don't I just show you what I mean? This is the car repair shed here that I kit bashed. And it, it goes over the tracks about where this about where this uh, and I haven't decided exactly where to position this. But the idea is that the prototype has this exact same arrangement of three tracks inside a car repair shed. And uh, what I wanted to do is is uh, build this ladder out to the north end of the car repair shed. So with that introduction, these tracks have been in here for years, but I never put this ladder on the left until today. So the first thing I did was to take a Palette knife, let's see, what do you call this? Well, palette knife, uh, putty knife, I call this a putty knife. And I scraped underneath here to remove the, the glue that I had been holding the track down with. Um, I use uh, liquid latex to hold my track down uh, because I like the way it kind of deadens the sound. And uh, it also is not water soluble after it sets which can be handy after you, when you put ballast down and glue it. So I thought it would be a clever idea since I need to make a piece of track to fit in between this switch and the existing track. If I reused an old piece of flex track that was torn up from a different construction project years ago and I had it uh, stored in my used flex track, it happened to be kind of curved. So I just adjusted it a little bit more a few minutes ago. And I was able to get it adjusted so I don't have to nip the rails on this side. But it looks like I'm going to have to nip them here. So the first step that I generally do is to remove the tie. See, I'm going to have to cut these two pieces of rail right where they will match these two pieces of rail, assume that I have it, assuming that I have it sighted up properly, aligned properly, which I think I do. But it's very hard to see, and I'm not going to need this middle tie, the, the tie that's right 
over where the rail joint is going to be. Uh oh, we don't want that to move or we'll get the wrong the wrong length. It would make more sense to install these switches with their rail joiners first, but I don't always do the thing that makes the most sense. So what I wanted to convey here is that if you remove the tie right where you're going to cut first, it makes it an awful lot easier to see where it is you want to cut. And uh, so I just go in here and pop that one tie off. You see how I was able to just cut the little ribbon behind it. Now I can see through the tie to um, where I need to cut. And I think I'll take the camera off the tripod so you can see this more closely. So here's the existing end of the track, this rail joiners that I can reuse. And then if I lay this over here, right where I want it, yeah, you can see this much better close up. Now, if I just hold down this track in the right position, See, I've got to position it on the on the left side here, so it's right up against the rail. I lost my signal there for a minute. I hope that doesn't happen again. So I was just about to demonstrate that I can cut or mark the place that I want to cut by holding holding it just like that and putting the mark right where the rail is. And if I do that on the other side as well, see I'm holding the pliers right where the end of the rail is. I just make a little mark and now I can Put this back in the tripod and hope it doesn't disconnect us again. Sorry about that. That's the only trouble with a model railroad in the basement is you don't necessarily have the best connection. So remember, I just I, mar I marked this um, with a little tiny mark with my pliers on the rail. So now if I can find those marks on the rail, which is hard to see, but it's very easy to feel it. You just take the pliers and cut the rail. And then I'll find the other mark that I made. It goes right there. And we'll cut that. I'm trying to hold it vertical to make a nice vertical clean cut. And so much for that piece of rail. That's a scrap for some other time. But now for this time, we have this perfectly nice rail and we can hold it in and see if it fits. With any luck, it fits just right. And uh, you'll have to take my word for it that it does fit very, very close to perfect. So now the next thing we have to do is file the ends of, these, of this rail so that it um, will fit in the rail joiners and remove any of that paint that might get in the way of the rail joiner. So if I start with the underside and do the face, but I don't know how important it is to do the face of it, but seems like a good idea. Then I take the uh, other file and a square or a triangular file like this and just scrape the web. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Scrape the web off with this file. And on both sides. 
you can see that this track or the rail anyway, was only painted on one side, which is fine. We'll do that later. So see, I'm I'm filing the inside of the, um, or the bottom of the rail in order to make it a very sharp edge to take the um, rail joiner. So the rail joiner will fit over it. And of course, the other thing I'm doing is removing any paint that might have worked its way up on the side of the rail. This is really important because you want the rail joiner to have good electrical connectivity. A lot of people say that you should run a wire to every single piece of rail, which um, I agree with, at least in theory. But in practice, I haven't done it. And I've been running this railroad for 35 years with a number of rail joiners doing the work between sections of rail to conduct the electricity. Now, I'm, I'm a little concerned about how close this tie is to the end of the rail. So I have a couple of options here. One is to cut the tie off and just put another one in place. And I think I'm gonna pick that one. The other thing I could try to do is, is take the X-Acto knife and just carve out the spot under here. Actually, that might be better because uh, it'll make the track stronger. So let me take an X-Acto knife if I have one. Here is an X-Acto knife. Now this X-Acto knife is got a nice little protecting cover, which is good. So if you can see my end here, I'm gonna just take the knife and try to cut a, a little slot underneath the rail without wrecking the, the rest of the flex track. And this might work or it might not. But whatever you do, try not to stab yourself with it. Now you're not supposed to cut towards your finger, so now if you if you scrape that enough times, you should have a space underneath allow the rail joiner to pass through there without causing a problem. It's possible that this go. Yeah, I did that without cutting myself, although that I don't promise to succeed in that in the future. We'll keep that handy here and get it again. So what I just did was to gouge a little bit of underneath here so that the rail joiner will not cause a problem. Now, in this case, we have, um, we're, we're kind of ready to go. I've got the rail, the rail joiners are already in place on this track which isn't always the case, but first I better vacuum the mess that I've made on the surface. That tool I do have handy. It's very hard to make a model railroad without a vacuum cleaner. All right, so. Let's try inserting this in the rail joiners. And see what happens. Well, in all that fussing, what happened was the curve came out of this piece of track, which is kind of unfortunate. But with any luck, if I curve it over, it'll come back to where it was. Oops. 
And that's kind of where it was. And it seems to be staying, which is kind of nice. So you see, it's pretty easy to curve flex track. It depends whether it uh, comes a pre weathered rail or, or not. If it's pre weathered rail, it tends to be very difficult to curve it. But in this case, it worked okay. Now I'm, I like to spend a lot of time sighting along the rail to make sure it got straight. But this looks great, and it looks to me like um, it looks to me like I'm ready to insert a bunch of rail joiners now and get this thing working. That was my last uh, act of recycling used flex tech. Oh, I know. The other thing I didn't do was to uh, file the ends of this rail. So we better do that just to, for safety here. Now it's kind of silly to do that uh, while it's inserted, so I'll take it out. Now I, I go by the principle of uh, there's never time to do it right once, but there's always time to do it right over, uh, uh, over, over later. So this is an example of that. If I had been paying attention to myself, I would have filed these before I inserted the track in there. But I never said that track laying is easy or efficient. I just, it's just fun. And actually it's not even that much fun. It's just running trains is fun. And the only way you can run trains is if you have track. So I've, I've ended up spending the last 30 years trying to do scratch building and whatever, but mostly just doing track. So good luck with model railroading. If you can get beyond track laying and actually enjoy yourself, you've done better than I have. Although I actually do enjoy myself. I shouldn't say that, but the, it would be nice to actually finish laying track. For example, that building, that's the car repair shed. It, it needs to be strengthened and lit. And then, you know, think of the fun I could have making an interior for that with, with uh, inspection pits and some sort of small um, overhead cranes for, all right, I'm getting carried away. So now I've filed this with the hopes that I can get rail joiners on it. So let's take the rail joiners. I'm using the microengineering code 70 rail joiners. And what I tend to do is just put the two that I need out on the surface. Can you still see this? Yeah. I'm uh, appreciating the three of you that are actually watching this live and I hope you're enjoying it. Um, this is the pair of pliers I use for inserting rail joiners. I've been using this pair of pliers for lay laying track, I think since my high school days, which were in the 1960s. So this is a, a tool that I'm very fond of, my, my needle nose pliers. And you insert that, can you see what I'm doing? You just shove that on there. And uh, it's sometimes it's easy other times, but usually it has to do with whether you filed the rail enough to make a sharp point. Let me show you that on the camera. You see how sharp the point is on the wet on the bottom, the web of the rail? That's the key to being able to put a uh, rail joiner on successfully. So I've got these two rail joiners on. And remember, this is code 70 flex track and switches, and I'm using code 70 rail joiners. So that's something to keep in mind. So now I'm ready to slide these on, on here, but I, <clears throat> I probably should think about that because this piece of track also needs to be 
slid into these rail joiners. So I think I'm, I don't know, I'm tended to slide them on here first, since we already know that works. And before we struggle with the, before we struggle with this, let's let's just think about this. If I put if I put this onto here, then that fixes this turnout down. But these turnouts over over here are not are not uh, fastened down either. So if I'm really ready for the big moment, which I think I am. It seems to me that I, we should start over on the left since that track is fixed and put the rail joiners in down there. So let's let's do that. Let's move the camera over there and see if I can work on the other side to install a few more of these rail joiners. You kind of got the idea, so I don't know how interesting it is to keep going on a live stream. Sort of like watching somebody uh, brush their teeth or something. How many rail joiners can you watch a person put in? Let's see, I think it would make sense to, uh, maybe preload some of these. Let's see how easy it is or not. Yeah, see, see, it goes right in there. You see that? Oh, no, you couldn't see it. Sorry, had the camera off. You were on the wrong angle. So let's try it again. So I grabbed that little web with my with my pliers, and then I just stick that in there and carefully slide it in. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I better get out some more rail joiners. This is a case where there's so many rail joiners that we're about to put in that I might as well put a few of them out. So take two more of these. And we'll go back here. I know, I know. I should have put all these in before I went live. Sorry about that. So the way I'm doing this is a little dangerous because I'm just holding the whole the whole project up in the air here. And if it were to slip, I might hurt myself. So another way to do it is to hold the the turnout or the track down on the surface while you push it. Can you see this? Sort of, my hand in the way. So if I hold this down, I can I can slip this in with little less because I'm holding the turnout. I have a little less risk of the whole thing flying off and hurting my finger, whatever. So now I have the rail joiners on there, both ends. And I might as well put it on this end too while I'm at it because it's not gonna get easier later. There we go. The nice thing about these micro-engineering rail joiners is they're very tight fitting. Like I said, I've got a lot of these on the layout and I don't know of any that have stopped conducting electricity despite being ballasted and everything else. So let's just keep going and inserting rail joiners in these turnouts. What harm can it do other than being boring to watch. I don't think we're gonna, it's gonna take that long to actually finish this because once the rail joiners are in, we just stick it all together and it's almost like assembling 
sectional track. Now, if you want to, you can come back afterwards and solder, solder the gaps. And I've done that some, uh, especially in places that I'm worried about. But I don't do it as much because the thing is, if you solder all your track together, and there's any kind of change in temperature, then you end up with a bunch of thermal stress because of expansion and contraction. And uh, so it's easy to say solder all your rail joints, but I, I like to keep a lot of, uh, I like to, to allow the track to be able to slide a little bit and not be bound up by being completely soldered together. So now I'm going to put in our la what I think is our last rail joiner. How exciting is that? Am I in the picture? Yeah, that's good. You're getting a nice constant view of my wedding ring. Okay, so now I think we have all the rail joiners in place. So we're ready to do this entire ladder. wonder what the right view is. Maybe you would enjoy it more if I put the camera over here. Let's try that. Even though I'm, even though I'm right-handed. So I might accidentally block your view at times. Let's try that. Let's try that. So we have the focus reasonable. All right. So how, how bad could this be? We just shove the the uh, switches with the with the uh, rail joiners in place. And there's one. And then we shove the next one. And then we shove the next one. And now we've come to the point where we were just working a minute ago with this curved piece of track. And of course it's it's uh, held down on the other end. So I'm gonna have to shove the rail joiners off to the side. Now this is a trick. I'll, I'll give you a better view of this. This is a very important trick for track laying it's with flex track. It's so important I'm gonna fuss with the camera angle. Okay, so what are we doing here? The problem is we've got we've got this rail this rail on the right hand side is fixed can't move, and now the 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 ladder we just installed is somewhat fixed, although we can still pick it up, which is very good because that means we can create a little bit of uh, slack, but not quite enough of a gap to slide it in here. So the only way I've ever found to fix this is to have enough space on the rail. You see what I'm doing? That you can slide this rail joiner, oops, farther over the track and then slide it back after you've got the rails. Now that worked a lot easier. This one may have some lingering solder from a previous project. So, 
you saw you 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 can snap it on there if you and then and then use your pliers to slide it back on there see how well that worked and this one you can do the same thing with now you might be appalled by the size of that gap but that's because we haven't put the turnout in its final position yet so it'll it'll come in as we as we straighten out this curve it'll come in and be a better fit Now we have the next one, and we can do the same kind of thing there, although we might be able to do it by just pulling up like this. There, see, I can just pull it up enough to get it in. Yeah. My main I may not be able to do anything about it because that's a fixed piece of track. And we have this switch pretty much where we intended to have it. Yeah, that's not too bad, but I'm not too happy about those gaps. Of course, getting getting oops, getting everything cut just right is the big challenge of track laying for sure. Okay, now we'll come down here. Look at our next our next joint. Let's see. Do you have enough flex to do this? Yeah. See, if I if I bend this up like this, I can I can fit it in and get it to catch inside the rail joiner. Oh yes. No, that didn't that didn't catch right. There. Do you hear that little click? Okay. So now look at that. That one we have a much better fit on. And then finally, we have one last track down here. This is getting really exciting. We get this <clears throat> one other piece of track here. We're going to be able to test it with a locomotive. So, looks like what we need to do here is cut these rails. Now, as I described before, I'm going to start by cutting off the end web. Whoops, I got out of the camera field. Apologize. Looks like I should be using my reading glasses. All right. Where was I? Oh, in here. So see if I cut that web, I can pull that, take that piece of tie off, and then I have a, a end that I can cut properly. Now I can shape this piece of track later, but the purposes here, what we need to do is make a, I want to make a flat cut. Because when you use a nipper like this, it only makes a good edge on one side because it's flush. It's a flush cut nipper. So you have to uh, use the right orientation when you're clipping it. So I did the one there, but now I have to measure the other one. And it looks like the, Location for that would be right here. Does that look about right? All right. Now, if you, when you're cutting that, one option is to let it fly across the room. The other one, you see, I put my finger in front of it. So we just go down on the floor. I, I've had uh, bad experiences with letting little pieces of rail fly across the room because they end up uh, later uh, appearing in uh, spot, you know, places like uh, um, 
switch switch points to make a, a cause a derailment, or they can get in a in a truck or a wheel set in a car. And they just you'd you'd be amazed at the places those little pieces of rail when they go flying across the room where they can end up. You'd never imagine, and you wouldn't think about it. So I'm uh, I'm just filing the rail ends here so that they'll work well with the rail joiner. This is uh, the only one of these tracks that's stub ended, and the only significance to that is I had to make sure that the electrical power would transfer over from the turnout. So here we go. I'll show you that in a second. First, we're going to put this piece of track in. There we go. Got it in there. And now with a stub end like this, you can kind of move the track to where you want it. Curve it over and keep the uh, alignment of the rail joiner the way you want it. It's a little tricky to figure out how to get the rail ends to be where you want it and the ties, the ties as well. So, that's not glued down. It's not glued down, but all of the rail joiners are in place, which means that with any luck, we should have power to this whole area if we did it right. Now, before I go over and turn on the layout and see if we can run an engine, of course, there's also the track cleaning aspect of this, but I think I already did that. I cleaned the, the top of the rails and all these. But I do want to take a moment to show you one important thing here, which is that if you need the electricity for, the, for a piece of flex track to come from one of these microengineering turnouts, uh, you have to wire it, you have to solder a piece of wire, in this case from this outside rail, over to this outside rail. And you've got to make sure to do it with an insulated piece of wire so that you don't short out the electricity between these two. So I already did this here, but I didn't need to do it for the other side because all of these tracks that are coming out of this ladder are powered on the other side of the layout. Well, they're, they're powered from the center here. I have feeders on all these tracks in the center. So they're already getting their electricity. So the, the, the power, for example, the power for this rail is coming on in here all the way to the frog. And of course, the power for this rail is coming from a soldered connection in the microengineering turnout over to this rail, and that is coming from this track's left-hand rail. So if that was too complicated, I apologize, but just wanted to cover a little bit of the weathering. Okay, I mean wiring, not wire, weathering. We can do another session on that. So we have, um, it's the best angle to do, show this. Uh, how about if we come over to the right? What we're gonna do now is an unrehearsed test using a locomotive. Now there are a lot of ways I could test whether I have electricity in this new track. And of course, I'll have to do this again after I glue it down. But maybe, yeah, this, I don't know. What do you think? Is that a good way to do it? 
I don't know. At least we can go back a little ways. We want to see. Yeah, I'll try to. I'll try to follow it for you. With the tripod. See that engine is already on the track number thirty-three. So let me fire up the layout and see if that engine will work. All right, so, oops, sorry, I keep kicking the tripod. That must be hard to watch. So first of all, we take our throttle and we select the locomotive we want to run. So we'll press select loco and we'll enter 033 because 33 is the long address in this decoder. And then we'll press enter. And then we'll try the horn and see if it works. Oh, listen to that. Okay. This is one of these new Rapido SW1200s. So now we'll start with the, uh, let's put the headlight on and the rear light, which I have programmed to F4. There's the rear light. Can you see that? Yeah, you probably can. So uh, now we can try firing up the sound. That's interesting. Why the headlight dimmed when I did that? I have no idea. Maybe there's a reason. We're going to go in reverse. There's reverse. We'll roll up this throttle a little bit. And there we go. Now, of course, we already knew we had power to this track here. Because, whoops, track is dirty, isn't it? Well, let's see what's going on. I think what's going on is the track is very dirty. Use your fingernails pretty well, but... There we go. We got our sound back for the moment. Now, I didn't think about setting the turnouts to the right setting, so let's do that. Oh, yeah, I didn't install the... Uh, Turnout throws. Now these microengineering turnouts are supposed to flip on their own, but sometimes they don't. So we'll have to see if it'll roll through that like a spring switch. It might. It's looking pretty good, as far as I'm concerned. Now, this turnout will allow us to go the other direction and check this piece of track. Cool. Now, this piece of track is really dirty. So, if this doesn't work at all. No, that works. The uh, problem with the sound is because these ESU uh, decoders are a little finicky about the sound. But there's nothing I can do about that, other than to keep the track as clean as possible. OK, so our second track is working. Oh, come on, you can do sound. Now let's try the third track. It's always fun when something you build works. Now I am going to have to come back and install these ground throws to give a positive 
uh, point throw for these turnouts, but I'll do that a different time. Now this one is working okay. You see how it does with the... We already know that it's the wiring's good because it wouldn't even go through the switch since it's getting its power from that side. Nice! I guess we better take these pins out so we can test the Okay. We got one more track to test. Did I flip that switch? No. Operating a railroad is amazing how Often you have to pay attention. All right, I flipped the switch. Now we can go forward. And with any luck, the fourth track is also working. Doesn't look too good. Oh, it does, it does. I don't know why it did that. Here we go, we got the sound back. Very nice, very nice. Well, that wasn't very nice. Why did it do that? Probably just because it was dirty. Like I said, you didn't see me clean the track, so there's probably finger oils and all kinds of stuff on it. There we go. That's better. Now I'm gonna call it a day for now, but We'll just let you watch the shutdown sequence close up because I always enjoy that. Okay, here's the shutdown sequence. And uh, goodbye for now. This has been Burr Stewart, your host, and wishing you much fun with trains. <laughs>